Malo te kataki and welcome to Pacific Pulse. I'm Clement Paligaru. Coming up, Coral Gardening, young Fijians reviving their reefs, a creative partnership spanning half a century, and up close and personal inside a famous artist's house. All over the world, there are serious concerns about the state of our coral reefs. Some scientists estimate we've already lost 5% of all reefs on this planet. But a group of young Fijians want to reverse the damage in their backyard with a bit of coral gardening. This may not be your usual gardening, but these children of Duvu village on Fiji's coral coast know exactly what they're doing. Uh, planting corals and uh, to make fish uh, live, live in them. So these are extremely strong corals. They're working under the supervision of Dr. Austin Bowden Kirby, a Fiji based marine scientist. He came up with a new method of reef creation after studying the way bits of storm damaged corals scatter, attach themselves to rock, and grow again. These children are, are, are taking little bits and pieces of coral and they're planting them onto to frames and watching them grow. The corals will grab onto the little cement cookies within a month or two. They will grab on and they'll become beautiful, rounded corals. We just clip them off and then we plant them onto their fish houses. The sand and cement fish houses form the foundation of a coral colony, which attracts fish and other marine life to the area. The day we went to the fish houses and we saw these porcupine fish in there, they were all excited. And giant clams are settling on their own. And baby corals are coming in the currents and also finding these fish houses. As we grow coral, they are about five years, grow bigger, so the fish to there, inside there, produce many fish. So people go there, fish, and they've got their fish there. This one animal, has killed two to three thousand corals in its life. As in many parts of the world, the crown of thorns starfish has wreaked havoc here. The Coral Gardens project also aims to inform villagers about the human impact on reefs from overfishing, pollution, and environmental degradation. It takes time to change, like uh, behavior, for the older people. But with children, I think it's. It's vital that we teach the children because then they go home, they tell their parents, and they make sure their parents do it. If you planted flowers, you're not going to then step on those flowers. If you plant corals, you're not going to throw your anchor or drag your fishing net over those corals. You're going to start respecting corals for the first time maybe in your life and understanding they're fish houses. Now a marine protected area, it's supported by a partnership between the not-for-profit Partners in Community Development, the Shangri-La Hotel, which leases coastal land here, and the traditional landowners. I'd like to hear back from the people, the resource owners, like saying, hey, the marine protected area is working, we're having more fish on our table, or you know, at least now we've got more fish here for, to feed our children. The project is not just about food security now, but these children's future in a world of climate change. Corals are important because they pro protect the land from the big waves. Nikolai Mishatushkin and Aloy Pilioko are among the Pacific's most famous artists. Nikolai is from Russia and Aloy is from Wallace Island and their creative partnership has crossed oceans and cultures for 50 years. Tanya Nugent spent a day with this talented duo in Vanuatu. I was expecting something different, but not this different. This is the Misho Tushkin Pilioko Foundation, museum, art gallery and home to two of the South Pacific's best-known artists. Nice to see you. 
French-born Russian Nikolai Mishotushkin was already an established artist when he came to the Pacific on a creative pilgrimage in the 1950s. Our colour is so important. The sun, the sun. I have been always in a pursuit of the, of the sun. That's the latest painting I did. What it means, it's just the wind, it's just the plants, it's just the, the vaca, it's uh, the melanation profile, the fishing nets, and uh, what really the South Pacific means uh, to me, that constant movement, the constant colors, the flowers, the boats, and the freedom. In 1958, Nikolai opened his first gallery in New Caledonia and it caught the attention of a young man from Wallace Island in Polynesia, Aloy Pilioko. And Nikolai looked at me and he said, come inside. So I go and uh, I not, never see the painting like that, the color. I think, oh my, maybe I want, I want something like that. But he was an extremely timid young man. He was not talking. And uh, one day we found him sitting behind a crate and trying to draw. That was his, uh, the, the first drawing. First of all, he has, by himself, developed what he wanted to do. So in the beginning, he started painting in oil. Then he did some drawings, then he did some uh, uh, needlework on uh, copra bags. I paint the, the people first, and the animal, and the, the fish, and the, all the ceremony, the dancing, and the, the market. When I met Nikolai, I saw we, we become artists and we have an exhibition every all around the world. Uh, in Russia, I never think I go to Russia before. And to Sweden, to Japan, everywhere. It's like a, a plant that has planted in a very proper environment. I'm not intruding in what he's doing, I'm not directing him. He just finds his own inspiration and his own inspiration links him very closely to the life of the South Pacific. And that's what you see in the, the thing, that's why he's uh, feeling completely. He just doesn't stop he paints stones, he paints uh, whatever it is, he personalizes it, and uh, that's what is uh, absolutely remarkable. Even the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Even bathroom. my hair. Even your you hair. Know, look, I have yellow hair. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, I know meet Nikolai, I had not become artist. Of course, probably, there was a kind of personal relationship many, many years ago, but it has developed more into a, a working a twins association. Whatever he says, I, I have it in my mind. What I have in my mind, he expresses. It's like my twin brother, yes. If you want to see more of Nikolai and Aloy or see any of our stories again, go to our website. <laughs> Thanks for watching Pacific Pulse. We leave you with another sticky beak into the quirky and colourful home of Port Villa artist Aloy Pilioko. See you next time. Great bedroom, plenty of room. Awesome. Yes, at Samoa. This is the private collection of my cat. <laughs>